Next, a look at presidential campaign memorabilia at the Ohio History Center. Eight former United States presidents came from the state. The uh, presidents who have ties to Ohio are William Henry Harrison, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, uh, William Henry Harrison's grandson, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, William Howard Taft, and Warren Harding. Uh, the Ohio Historical Society looks to collect artifacts uh, and items related to presidential elections uh, because they have a contemporary interest in the moment. Uh, they have a, a significance later on. They are useful in illustrating uh, campaigns and showing how campaigns have changed over time and, and how they are similar. For example, in the campaign in the 1880s, a big campaign issue was uh, free trade and the Republican pitch was that it was to protect the prosperity of the country and keep American workers' wages high. Another issue that arose in the 1890s was the uh, free coinage of silver or maintenance of the gold standard. Although the United States has a large amount of silver, uh, people wanted to stay on something solid and secure such as gold to keep the money safe. Uh, the Democrats campaigned for free coinage of silver, Republicans campaigned for the gold standard. McKinley broadened that appeal to the gold standard by claiming that it would protect uh, American jobs, the financial industry, bring stability to the country. His other campaign theme from 1896, an example of it here, is the, uh, the full dinner pail. He promised that if elected he would bring prosperity to the country and the coal miner or the other worker would be able to bring a full dinner pail to work. We are in the third floor uh, library stacks area that's reserved for our audiovisual material. Uh, these are some of the items that are not on display but are available for researchers to use and look at upon request. This is an example of a political cartoon that appeared in the humor magazine Puck. It is attacking William McKinley and his political advisor, Marcus Hanna. It's implying the uh, self-coronation, much like Napoleon, of William McKinley. To the right, these are leaders in the, Ohio Con in the United States Congress and Senate. On the right, we have the Speaker of the United States House, uh, Reed, and leaders of the Senate, Senator Quay and uh, Senator Platt. Also from the humor magazine, Puck, sort of to, to counter that cartoon, we have William McKinley riding the uh, GOP element, elephants smashing through the, uh, the barriers to uh, free trade, including the Wilson Bill, and to bring prosperity back to the country and upsetting all the Democratic politicians, sweeping them out of the way. And then this cartoon uh, from a, seems to suggest that it would be done around 1912 uh, the Republican Party figure is a representation of William Howard Taft. The Democrats have not yet picked their candidate. Uh, lurking around the corner of the church is possible third party candidate, Teddy Roosevelt. And waiting at the church the, uh, are the women voters not yet recognized. And then today we have um, all sorts of campaign ads and political commercials. Well, prior to uh, radio and television, campaign booklets were printed and issued to interested people who could read up on the campaign issues in the nation and for Ohio. And this was printed by the Ohio Republican Party. It would say inside that um, the Republican Party and Warren G. Harding stands for America first and against the League of Nations. He was running against uh, James M. Cox, the uh, incumbent governor of Ohio who uh, embraced the idea of the League of Nations. And where would something like this have been handed out? At uh, political rallies or in campaign offices. Again, as you often see on political television shows showing which candidate has a better chance to carry a state. Uh, in the 1920 campaign, both candidates were from Ohio. Warren Harding was the senator. 
one of the senators from Ohio, and James Cox was the incumbent governor. Harding uh, had a sweeping victory. In fact, uh, the Republicans swept all political offices in the nation, national elections, state elections, and county elections. And then finally, we're going to look at a precursor to the 1924 campaign. This was done obviously before August 1923. Uh, suggesting that President Harding needed to avoid the pull, uh, again, of being involved in world affairs, such as the world court. The United States had rejected the League of Nations, but some people were pushing, well, at least we could join the world court. And again, there were people arguing that, no, we need not get involved in European affairs again. The solid plank, the prosperity plank, the made in America plank is the one that the Republican elephant needed to follow. This cartoon is interesting because it suggests that Warren Harding is running for re-election when unfortunately he, he dies in August of 1923. We can learn today that politicians are always looking for ways to connect with voters, uh, either through the songbooks and campaign booklets that they produced in the 19th century, political cartoons and advertising and speeches to hear his campaign themes.